What if I told you there was an app that made it super easy to animate your illustrations and you didn't even need to have any animation experience to do it? You'd be, you'd think I was crazy, right? And what if I told you that app was free? Even though I've done animations and motion-based illustrations for all kinds of big clients like Adobe, Cartoon Network, Adidas, and countless others, I actually have no formal training as an animator. I'm completely self-taught. I actually learned how to make animations by looking at GIFs. It's true though, I, I first started experimenting with animation after downloading a random GIF. You know how when you save a GIF on a Mac and you open it up and it just defaults to preview and you just see all the frames? instead of showing the animation, which is stupid. Why does it do that? I'm looking at them and being like, okay, um, that's actually less frames than I thought it would take to make that movement. Can we ask Apple? So I started playing around and morphing things. My earliest animations were, I think, done in Procreate. In Procreate, you can do frame by frame animation just like this pretty easily. But the problem is it's tied to your layers. In Adobe Fresco, I can have animation on every one of my layers. And this allows me to just sort of go at my own pace and decide to add more and more. Cause really I work sort of improvisationally and I don't really know exactly what I'm going to like add motion to, or like, you know, what would help. And I often think of things as I go, like I'll be, you know, having a plan for something and just start working on it because I just, I get ahead of myself. I just start working and not paying attention. The ADHD takes over and I'm just like hyper-focused on doing this thing. And then I'd get to a point where I'd be like, oh, I really want to add this other thing into it. And when I was working in Procreate, I already had all those layers. So in order to change that, I'd have to go back in to all of those layers and then hope that the timing worked out perfectly with the frames that I already had. In Fresco, that workflow is totally different because I can just add a new layer and put that new thing on top of that. During the development of Adobe Fresco, I was invited to this event with Apple and Adobe called uh, Make It On Mobile, and they invited a handful of creators to come and try it out and make some stuff with this new app, which at the time was referred to as like Project Gemini. And I thought it was really cool. I made something while I was there. But afterwards, when I went back home and went back to work, I just went back into Procreate because that's where I was comfortable. That was how my workflow had been sort of established. It was just what I knew. And then when it was finally released, I was excited and downloaded it to try it out. And to be honest, I really wasn't that into it. I was struggling to feel comfortable with it. I thought some of the features were a little bit clunky and I just kind of wrote it off and didn't touch it again for a long time. I actually didn't really try Fresco again until years later when I bumped into Kyle Webster at the Icon Illustration Conference. As we were chatting, I had this uncontrollable urge to be like, Kyle, I'm sorry, I am not using Fresco. And he was like, why aren't you using Fresco? And I was like, you know, I just haven't found a brush I was that comfortable with. I had these brushes that I was using and just the workflow, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, let me just show you some stuff. He got me situated with a brush. He asked me about what I liked about Procreate and like my workflow and what things I was doing with it. And I was talking about like the looping animations I was doing. As soon as I said that, he was like, have you tried the motion features in Fresco? And I was like, no, because I assumed that they were just the same as Procreate. I just thought, you know, they incorporated frame by frame animation. And boy, howdy, I was wrong. Kyle did a simple little demo and it blew my mind. And after that quick little demo, I was fully sold on Fresco and went all in and did pretty much all of my work in Fresco from then on out. If you're familiar with the animation assist in Procreate, you'll recognize this at the bottom here where I have this frame by frame sequence of this little monster turning its head and blinking. It's pretty straightforward. The problem is I want this little monster to be pedaling the bicycle. I want some other stuff in the scene and maybe I want some stuff behind him. I want him to be pedaling, did I already say that? We need the monster to pedal. Get a bike in here. The idea of doing all of those things in the past would have been so overwhelming and I just wouldn't have known where to begin. So let's say if I was in Procreate and I was like, all right, I'm just gonna start with this head turn sequence. I've got 28 frames, so it'd be 28 layers. And then I'd be like, okay, well now I need him to pedal. So not only would I have to figure out the motion for the pedaling, I would have to make sure that it fit within that, those 28 frames because I'd have to draw into them or I could like make groups in layers. Not the case in Fresco. Instead, what I do is I just have another layer here with my leg 
and I can animate that leg on its own. So this way I can just solve one problem at a time. It's like a little to-do checklist. I just kind of go through my checklist. And for me, it's fun because I usually don't know exactly what I'm going to animate. I might change my mind as I go and add little things and just keep going until it gets uh, mildly out of control. Another way the individual timelines is helpful is it makes it easier for me to figure out this leg motion for the pedal stroke because what I can do is have this crank pedal situation on its own separate layer. I can get that thing moving properly and then use that to guide where the leg goes. So for example, I'll click on my little drawing of the crank, then I will come down here to my timeline and I will duplicate that frame. And then I will just come over here and rotate it a little bit. Go like that, duplicate that one and rotate it. And as I'm doing it, I'm sort of paying attention to the distance between the frames. So it looks a little bit more natural instead of just like a perfectly even amount. I'm thinking, you know, he's a little out of shape. He's a little heavy. He's gonna have the best pedal stroke. Maybe he's gonna come down real fast and then a little bit slow and then down real fast like that. I think it'll look good, but that's the thing. I can experiment because I've got it this own layer and I can just change it here. That's not gonna affect everything. So to make it go slower on the way up, I'm just gonna do more frames, less distance between each one. I'm also being mindful of the amount of frames. I mentioned this before where it's like with a 28 frame sequence, I don't have to match that, but I do need to do something that is within that same um, range. So it's 28, I could do seven frames here, and then that would happen, is it uh, four? four times. So it would loop four times where the other one would just go once. And it wouldn't mess up the... Do we have a math guy? It would just keep restarting and loop. If it was a different amount, let's say it was five, it would go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then at that point, it would pass the 28 frames and get out of loop and then it would all get messed up. That was pretty good, right? And now we can play this and see. I think it looks pretty good. So what I'll do now is use this as a guide to figure out where the leg needs to go. So I've got my leg layer here. And what I can do is add a new frame, turn on my onion skins, and I can see that it needs to come down. So to make this less confusing, I can just go ahead and turn off all this other stuff that we don't need and just look at this. So I got the leg. I can also bring down the opacity on this crank so that we don't see it every time. And now I can just draw that foot where it would need to be and then just kind of eyeball the rest of the leg. And you know, this leg is kind of wonky anyway. And now we add a new frame and we do the same thing. Move the leg down a little bit. The back of the leg like that. And you just keep going until you get back to where you need to go and your leg will be in the right position. Look at that. That leg is just going right around perfectly. And then for the back leg, I just colored it in with that darker green to set it back a little bit and just put it underneath the bicycle frame and crank layer at the bottom. And now we've got this little frog. Is this a frog or a monster? monster. So now we checked a couple more things off the list. We've got the head turn, we got the blink, we've got the pedals, and now we can just move along one thing at a time. I'm thinking it would be nice to have like maybe a little bicycle chain on there that's like moving a little bit to add a little bit of motion. Draw a simple little line, connecting the two chain rings, and then make a new one. And then I'm just gonna kind of make it wiggle a little bit. And now we play that. Look at that. Simple little detail, adds a little bit to it. What about some tassels? Now all we're missing is the wheels turning. And guess what? There's a new motion feature that just got added right before I was getting ready to do this. And that is a path in place motion feature where you don't even have to do anything but just turn it on 
and control the speed and we can get these wheels spinning. I'm gonna click on this wheel layer here and I'm going to go to path and then over on this little menu, I'm just gonna come down to where it says sway and then choose spin. This is automatically gonna start spinning. We can control how fast it goes. I'm gonna bring this down to make it faster. Maybe we'll try 21 because that is divisible by seven. Look at that, that's a good speed. Come over to the other wheel and do the same thing. It's all happening. How easy is this? Magic. As you can see here, added some more stuff. Put it in this little background with a simple line boil where I just redrew it a handful of times and then looped it. So it's got that just sort of wiggly motion, gives it a little bit of energy. Same thing with the rainbow. And then I got these little clouds and then put faces on them. Just some simple frame by frame, moving them around back and forth. And just because I can, just because I can do it separately one layer at a time. So with the frame by frame sequence on these cloud faces, I can take that whole thing and make it sort of like bob up and down a little bit like a floaty cloud in the sky. I'm just gonna click on this path option underneath my frame by frame sequence. And I'm just gonna come in here and try to draw a circle right in the center of that cloud. And now we've just got this subtle little moving around blah, 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 blah. Let's come over here to this other cloud and do the same thing. And just draw a little circle path with the clouds moving around. It's a lot of fun, right? But you know what this needs? We need some other clouds floating in the background to make it look like he's moving through time and space. So I drew a couple clouds, put them on a motion path so they're traveling across the background, but I think it would look better if they were just happening inside that little ecosystem, that little world that I've created for this little monster on a bike. And you know what? This couldn't be any easier. Could this be easier? Nope. I'm told it couldn't be easier. All we gotta do is click on this layer and then make it a clipping mask, boom, it's locked into the purple land. And you know what would look even better? If we had a cloud in the background that was behind the monster, moving at a slower speed because it's further in the distance, that'll give us a nice parallax effect. Is parallax the word? What does parallax mean? All right, I drew the cloud. Got a cloud back there. It's on a path, it's moving. It's going a little bit slower. As you can see, these front clouds are catching up to it. And here again, I'm just gonna make it a clipping mask, locked into the purple world. And now we've got background clouds, foreground clouds, face clouds, all kinds of clouds. And I'm feeling pretty happy with this, but I think I just need one more little, little thing. How many noises are you gonna make? So I think what we need is some stars in this starry night. So I'm just gonna go ahead here, make a new layer and draw a tiny little star. And there we go, that's all we need to do. So now with our one little tiny star, we can hit path. What I'm gonna do here is go into this grow shrink option. Let's move this over so we can see what's happening. And then we will Adjust the percentage so it's gonna get smaller. Add multiples, we can scatter them, and look, we fill the star, fill the sky with stars. Can you believe it, Bluey? All right, what do we got? We got stars everywhere. Sorry, night. Were you also completely unaware that all of these features existed in Fresco? If so, let me know in the comments. If you're even half as excited as I was after Kyle Webster gave me a little demo on this stuff, you're gonna wanna dive right into it. And if that's the case, I have a whole playlist dedicated to just motion and fresco. I think you should check it out. I got it right here, you just need to click on it and you will be ready to just bring everything to life. It'd be like your own Dr. Frankenstein, but with, with pictures, animated GIFs. All right. I think this has been a good talk. You let me know below.
Somebody needs to tell Adobe that they need to market this app. It's like they have a free app and they're not even telling anyone. Like it's, it's literally free. Like the free version is a complete version. It comes with over 200 of Kyle Webster's brushes. You just only get like two gigs of extra cloud storage and you can't import your own brushes. If you wanna import your own brushes, it's $9.99 a year. Listen, my kid was playing a game on the iPad today and it was asking me to like upgrade to get another level in the game and it was $14.99 just for that level. Also, I hate Paw Patrol. 